So if you hit the next. Okay. It says college planning is a foundation. So it really starts at the college. So the college technology committee, the college educational master planning committee or the SIMC. And for us, our college educational master planning committee is also our accreditation committee because it's cross-discipline, it's large, and when we're in an off-cycle, we really should be tying what we do with our educational master plan and our unit plans also with accreditation, because that's really what we're trying to achieve. So each college would have those um, planning committees for decision-making, and they would be the foundation. Next slide, because this is gonna build. So we would look at our unit plans, we would look at our program reviews, we would make decisions at the college on what are our priorities, and then they would go up to those various committees, depending on if it was a technology issue, whether it was a facilities issue, or whether it was just a general education. So next slide, it's gonna build. And we would do those resources and we would do the prioritization at the college level. And then depending, like I said, what it was, it would go to the other ones. Next slide. It would go to either technology, education, or facilities, again. And then we would have what we call our district subject matter. The way that this committee, these committees would work is that membership on those committees, those various three committees, would come from the subject matter experts at the college level. So for example, we just met with the district distance ed committee and they said we should have at least one network coordinator on that committee to represent all network coordinators within the district. We should have all four of the distance ed campus coordinators on that committee. We should have, I won't say, I take that back. They recommended, which is different than what you're gonna see on the next slide, is that instead of saying it's going to be the distance ed campus coordinator, it should be a representative from the technology committee. It could be the distance ed coordinator, or it could be someone else. So rather than specifically tying it down, that was a recommendation that came out of that body. And those are the types of recommendations that we're hoping to get from this meeting today, that you give me some specific feedback to say, I agree, I disagree, I think we should have more of this or less of that. But remember the guiding principles. The guiding principles are to look at student success, not to look at what's good for College of Alameda, and I'm gonna go in there and I'm gonna fight for us, it's really to take a holistic view, given the information, and to make an informed decision based upon either your subject matter expertise or the knowledge that is provided to you through whatever documents that come through this committee, these different committees. So this is, would be the charge of the technology committee, for example, to look at the website, to look at prompt, which is our academic and administrative computing, to look at the prompt system, to look at smart classrooms that have been talked about, to look at the catalog because we have a software system called Curriculet that we're using with the catalog right now, to look at task stream because we have that for SLOs, and anything else that relates to technology. We didn't try to go through and say it's this, this, and everything, but anything that has to do with technology. If you look at the charge for the education committee, it would be educational planning. And Robert asked me a question about where is it, and maybe I missed it in this document, he said, where we tie education to what our vision is and what our mission is. It would be through that body. It would be through the education committee. Oh, you found it? Okay. It was on every kind of word that Okay, all right. All right, so it would also look at any, the academic calendar. Um, it would look at student services, marketing, outreach. So those are the things that the education committee would do. And you see that the bottom of the, the little arrow means that, that those recommendations are coming from the campus. And then the last committee is the facilities committee. And again, they would look at facilities. But there was always going to be overlap. For example, smart classrooms not only have to do with technology, but they also have to do with facilities. So that's why you see the arrows going back and forth. So it isn't just that it would go through the facilities committee, it would also go through the technology committee, and hopefully there would be a resolution recommendation that would come from both bodies that would be at least similar or close. And the other key thing is they would not stop the recommendation from the college. 
they would still pass it forward, but they would make a recommendation based upon the feedback from that particular committee, whether it's education, facilities, or technology, and then it would go up to, you see why I called it the Tough Decision Making Committee, because they would then have to say, College of Alameda had that as priority number one, but given all these other things, we think it should be priority number 12, or eight, or two, or, or whatever. Okay. The composition. Now, this is the one where everybody starts paying attention. <laughs> the other stuff is kind of like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, this is, the, this, is, this is where the rubber meets the road, so to speak. This is the composition, because everybody wants to make sure we get our fair share, and we really, absolutely, I believe this from the bottom of my heart, that we are trying to move from a competitive, you know, give me mine, you know, forget those other colleges, let's just make sure COA gets their fair share, to really looking at it from a, a holistic view of if we are successful, then the district is successful, and Merritt is successful and Laney is successful. And that's hard to do. That is extremely hard to do. Even with our own little committee, it was hard to do. <laughs> so, these were the recommended compositions for each of the committee. And one of the things that we decided we did not want to do was to have a, and I think somebody called it, a Noah's Ark approach where we have one person from every campus that's representing this, or two people from every campus representing that. Because when you start to have those large committees, I will tell you from experience, people don't all show up. And they feel because it is such a large committee, they don't have to show up. And what happens is you don't have any continuity. You have people popping in and popping out and saying, well, what, what did you guys talk about last month? So then you spend half the meeting bringing the people that weren't there up to speed and the meetings go on and on and on and you don't get anything accomplished. So then what happens is the people that are really interested in the committee stop showing up because they say, you guys don't do anything. Or you, they show up and there's four people out of 16 sitting at the table. How many people have had that experience? I, I, it happens. So when we were coming up with the composition, we tried to come up with something that made sense, but wasn't just, a, okay, we'll get one from every college, which is why I told you about what the recommendation was for the um, technology committee, which is a little different than what you see up here. And I'm not gonna go through each one of these because you have it there in front of you, if, but if you have any questions about it, please let me know. But that was the background and that was the reasoning of why we came up with the recommendations. We tried to look at function and not just look at, okay, we have to have every one from every college to be able to do this. Sometimes we said we need one from every college, but we tried to make sure that it was functional, not just to say we want to have somebody at the table from every college. The other concept, if you look in the PBIM, which is that thick document that has all the narrative in it, you'll see that one of the tenets is that we want to make sure that the committee is representative of each campus, but it doesn't mean that it has to be one person from each campus. So say we had one network coordinator on the technology committee, and that person happened to be from College of Alameda, then we might want to have the researcher come from a different college. So it wouldn't be the researcher from College of Alameda as well as the network coordinator from College of Alameda. So we tried to make it so it would be broad enough so that the colleges were all representative, but they weren't just one person in each position. Okay? And then the District Planning and Budget Committee. This was the tough one because this is the committee that has the final recommendation to the Chancellor and to the SMT. And this is the one, I think, where um, we did not come to consensus on. And, and I'll just be honest with that. Patricia Dudley was on the committee with me. Uh, Carlotta Campbell was on the committee with me from College of Alameda. Um, and we came up with recommendations, but we didn't all agree on it. 